This chapter delves into the frequency response of discrete circuit amplifiers, focusing primarily on MOSFET and BJT amplifiers. It addresses key topics like the low and high frequency behavior of these amplifiers and the role of coupling and bypass capacitors, as well as internal transistor capacitances in shaping the overall amplifier performance. The primary aim is to provide a comprehensive understanding of how these elements impact the amplifier's gain across different frequency bands and how to design circuits that optimize bandwidth and minimize unwanted signal distortion. The concepts explored in this chapter are essential for understanding amplifier behavior in real-world applications, especially where signal integrity over a wide frequency range is critical. Low Frequency Response of Discrete Circuit Amplifiers At low frequencies, discrete circuit amplifiers such as the common source, CS, and common emitter, CE, configurations experience a reduction in gain due to the behavior of coupling and bypass capacitors. These capacitors are essential in blocking unwanted DC components and providing proper signal coupling between stages. However, at lower frequencies, the reactance of these capacitors increases, leading to a decrease in overall amplifier gain. For the CS amplifier, capacitors like CC1, CC2, and the bypass capacitor CS introduce poles and zeros in the transfer function, which are characterized by time constants. These time constants influence the frequency at which the gain drops by 3 dB from its mid-band value. Understanding the dominant pole is crucial for estimating the low frequency 3 dB point, FL, as it directly defines the lower boundary of the amplifier's useful bandwidth. This analysis also applies to the CE amplifier, although the interaction between capacitors is more complex due to the finite base current in BJTs. This complexity often necessitates the use of methods such as short-circuit time constants to estimate the low-frequency performance. Common Source Amplifier Analysis For the CS amplifier, a primary interest lies in understanding the effect of coupling capacitors on gain at low frequencies. The large input resistance at the gate of the MOSFET simplifies the analysis of the CS amplifier, particularly at mid-band frequencies where capacitors act as short circuits. However, at low frequencies, their impedances become more significant, reducing the amplifier's gain. The equivalent circuit of a CS amplifier at low frequencies can be analyzed by considering the time constants introduced by each capacitor. Specifically, the capacitors introduce poles and zeros that cause the frequency response to roll off at low frequencies. The low frequency gain is derived from the voltage divider formed by the input resistance of the amplifier and the reactance of the capacitors. By determining the values of these time constants, we can estimate the 3 dB frequency, FL, which indicates when the amplifier's gain falls below its mid-band value by 3 dB. In the CS amplifier, the capacitors are relatively independent, and each introduces a distinct pole in the transfer function. The dominant pole is typically associated with the bypass capacitor CS, which determines the low-frequency cutoff. Common Emitter Amplifier Analysis In contrast to the CS amplifier, the CE amplifier exhibits more complex interactions between the coupling capacitors at low frequencies due to the finite base current in the BJT. This interaction makes the estimation of the amplifier's low-frequency response more intricate. The effect of the capacitors on the gain is determined by the interaction between the base emitter junction capacitance, the emitter resistance, and the coupling capacitors. The short circuit time constant method, which involves considering each capacitor one at a time while short circuiting the others, provides an effective approach to estimating the low frequency performance. This method allows for the calculation of the 3 dB frequency, FL, by examining the time constants associated with each capacitor and their corresponding resistance seen by the capacitor. While this method is straightforward, it also reveals how the values of the coupling and bypass capacitors must be carefully selected to achieve the desired low frequency cutoff. In general, the bypass capacitor CE tends to dominate the low-frequency response due to its smaller associated resistance. High-frequency response of MOSFET and BJT amplifiers The high-frequency response of an amplifier is primarily determined by the internal capacitive effects of the transistors used in the circuit. For MOSFETs, several internal capacitances play a significant role in limiting the amplifier's bandwidth. 
These include the Gate to Source Capacitance, CGs, the Gate to Drain Capacitance, CGD, and the Source and Drain Body Capacitances, CSB and CDB. These capacitances result from the physical structure of the MOSFET and can be modeled as part of the transistor's small signal model. The Gate Capacitance, particularly the Overlap Capacitances, CGs and CGD, dominates the high-frequency behavior of MOSFET amplifiers. These capacitances cause the gain to fall off at high frequencies as they limit the rate at which charge can be stored and transferred within the device. The small signal model of the MOSFET must be augmented to include these internal capacitances, and this augmented model is used to predict the high-frequency performance of MOSFET amplifiers. For BJTs, similar charge storage effects limit the high-frequency performance. In particular, the base emitter junction capacitance, CAE, and the collector base junction capacitance, CP, play critical roles in determining the high-frequency behavior of BJT amplifiers. These capacitances arise due to the accumulation of charge carriers in the base and collector regions. The high-frequency response of BJTs is similarly modeled by augmenting the basic hybrid P or T model to include these capacitive effects. This allows for more accurate predictions of amplifier bandwidth and gain at high frequencies. High Frequency Performance and the Miller Effect In both MOSFET and BJT amplifiers, the internal capacitances introduce what is known as the Miller Effect, which significantly affects the amplifier's high frequency response. This effect occurs when a capacitance is placed between the amplifier's input and output, amplifying the capacitance's impact on the frequency response. In the case of MOSFET amplifiers, the gate-to-drain capacitance, CGD, is especially susceptible to this effect. The capacitance, CGD, is effectively multiplied by the factor 1 plus GMRLF, where GM is the transconductance and RL is the load resistance. This multiplication increases the effective input capacitance, thus lowering the high-frequency cutoff, RFH. The Miller effect is especially pronounced in common source amplifiers, where CGD's effect is magnified due to the large voltage gain. To mitigate the Miller effect, engineers often employ circuit configurations that reduce the effective capacitance or place the amplifier in configurations where the input and output are less strongly coupled. This can involve using cascode amplifier designs, which are covered later in the chapter, or employing feedback techniques to reduce the amplification of CGD. The Miller effect highlights the importance of understanding both the small signal characteristics of the transistor and the layout of the amplifier circuit to ensure that the amplifier operates effectively at high frequencies. Bandwidth and Unity Gain Frequency The Unity Gain Frequency, FT, is a crucial figure of merit for high-frequency transistor amplifiers. It defines the frequency at which the amplifier's gain falls to unity, 0 dB, in the short-circuit current gain configuration. Both MOSFETs and BJTs exhibit this phenomenon, where the amplifier can no longer maintain a non-zero gain as the frequency increases. The unity gain frequency is determined by the combination of the transistor's transconductance, GM, and its internal capacitances. A higher FT value indicates that the transistor can operate at higher frequencies without significant loss in gain. In practice, FT is used as a benchmark for the speed and frequency capabilities of transistors in amplifier circuits. Design considerations for optimizing frequency. Response. Designing amplifiers with optimized frequency response requires careful selection of capacitors to achieve the desired low and high frequency cutoffs. The values of coupling and bypass capacitors must be chosen not only to meet the requirements for gain, but also to minimize unnecessary capacitance that could limit bandwidth. The goal is to place the lower 3 dB frequency, FL, at an appropriate frequency while ensuring that the amplifier remains stable and efficient. In CS amplifiers, for example, the bypass capacitor CS typically dominates the low frequency response and its value should be chosen so that its pole frequency is closest to FL. In CE amplifiers, the selection of capacitor values is similarly influenced by the time constants associated with the resistances seen by each capacitor. For high-frequency design, engineers need to consider the effects of internal transistor capacitances and the Miller effect on the input capacitance. Ensuring that these capacitances do not excessively increase the total input capacitance is key to maintaining a high FH. Design strategies might include using cascode amplifier configurations to reduce the impact of Miller capacitance, 
or selecting transistors with inherently lower capacitances to extend the bandwidth. The importance of this chapter for engineering students in summary, this chapter provides an in-depth exploration of the frequency response of transistor amplifiers, focusing on the roles of capacitors, internal transistor capacitances, and the Miller effect. Understanding these concepts is essential for designing amplifiers with controlled bandwidth, ensuring that the gain remains stable and predictable across a wide range of frequencies. As engineering students, this knowledge forms the foundation for designing high-performance circuits used in signal processing, communications, and a variety of other applications. By understanding how capacitive effects influence both low- and high-frequency responses, Students can make informed decisions in their designs, optimizing amplifiers for the required performance specifications. This knowledge is crucial for ensuring that amplifiers operate efficiently in real-world environments, where maintaining signal integrity across frequencies is often a key challenge. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe for the next chapter on feedback systems.